Hello. Today I'd like to just show you how you could uh, use an applique mat to help assemble some applique, particularly small fiddly bits with applique. So this is an applique mat, or otherwise known as a Teflon sheet, and you can bake your biscuits on it, but I would suggest that you don't bake your biscuits on the same one that you want to use for applique. However, biscuits would be nice. So it's a, often they come in this brownie colour. It's As I said, it's a Teflon sheet. Sometimes they're white. There's different products. I'm, I'm not even sure if they're all Teflon, but they this kind of thing that you can actually iron through. So if you were ironing, they're useful for all sorts of things. If you've got some sort of a t-shirt with an emblem on it that will come off on the iron, you can lay it underneath the applique mat and iron through it and that it won't affect the paint and those sorts of things. It's really good for a, te a Teflon mat. The, uh, what we're going to use it for is using the fusible applique method where we've got a fusible product. Uh, this particular one is a heat and bond light, but there's various different products on the market that we use for our applique. So it's got glue on one side, it's paper on the other. So I'll, it's more about using the mat today, but I'll quickly run through the basic process for applique. I'm going to show you um, how, to, uh, how to do one of the dolls out of my Japanese doll quilt. This is the pattern that I'm using. This is one of my patterns which just happens to be available on my website called That Japanese Doll Quilt. But I'm going to show you today to do how to how to assemble um, this one here. She's called Megumi. Um, because, because she's in little layers and she's fiddly bits, this is quite a good way of doing it. So these are my pattern pieces for Megumi with my applique paper. I can lay that, and lay that over the top and you can see that you can see enough of the lines to trace through. So I tend to trace my shapes onto the paper with a pencil. Often some of the papers on the different products don't accept pen so well so I tend to just use a pencil. I probably use a pencil all the time anyway. Um, so you would trace your shapes onto your applique paper onto the paper side. You would roughly cut them out but not exactly on your drawn line um, and you would iron them then to the wrong side of your fabric. So this is her face and as you can see I haven't cut her out. I have cut my other pieces out already. Um, but So I've ironed that onto the wrong side of the fabric. I've still left my little margin around and then I'm going to cut that out through the paper and the fabric on the line to do this type of applique. So this is a fused applique. I would most likely blanket stitch the edges on this applique when I'm doing the stitching part, it could be done by machine or hand, but there's other stitching methods. You could do straight stitch, you could do zigzags. There's lots of ways that people like to do applique, but it is basically a raw edge fused applique. So now I've cut that out on the line, so that piece is ready to go. Now, when I'm doing this sort of applique where you're assembling pieces, because you've got little bits laying over the top of others and overlapping, it's very helpful if everything is numbered so that you can start with the bottom piece and sort of build up. So when I do my patterns, I do tend to number all my pieces. Um, on this particular one here, I've got them all listed as to what the number of the piece is. And so when I trace my shapes, I pop a number on it as well so that I'm ready to pick them up. And I've now popped them in a little stack here that's all in their right numerical order. So I'm going to start with piece number one, which is this funny little neck piece, which is um, just sits under her chin. So in order to be able to make best use of the applique mat, it's ideal to have a full size picture of what you're going to be appliquing um, ready for you to, to lay your pieces over the top of, and I'll show you that in a minute. So just over the page on my pattern here is a full size picture, but because she's quite tall, she doesn't quite fit on the page, so she's got a little dotted line for joining. Um, so that you can make her into one picture. So what I ended up doing was printing another page of my pattern. My patterns are all downloadable, so you can just print them one page at a time. Um, so I printed an extra page while I did it twice so that I could show you. And I've cut along the dotted line and I've done my little joining so that she's now one complete picture, which will be very helpful and you'll see why in a minute. So I'm going to now lay that onto my ironing board and then I'm going to lay my applique mat over the top of that. And this is where, because it's see-through, so this is why a black one wouldn't work so well. You can lay that over the top and hopefully you can see that you can see right through that mat, you can see the design. And so then I'm going to take my start taking my pieces. So you would peel your backing paper off at this stage. So these are all cut out on their, their final lines. 
and make sure you've got the glue side facing down. So I've got my picture here, then my Teflon mat, and then I'm going to lay piece one. Now this is just her little neck triangle. I'm hoping you can see this clear enough. And all the edges are going to be overlapped. So it just needs to sit in that general vicinity because it's all going to be covered over. And now with my iron, I'm going to iron that to the Teflon mat. How bizarre is that? Now if your mat is likely to move, and sometimes they do, you could consider pinning the picture and the mat to your ironing surface so that it can't move and jiggle around because you don't want it jiggling around. So there's another little thought process with that. So now you don't need your little piece of paper. Now sometimes it's quite helpful when you're doing your applique to, to add some of the markings to your pattern pieces even though you're going to be peeling them off and not using them. It helps with positioning. So piece number two I've got here is her little neck collar which is a nice little bright red. So I'm going to pop that on just there. So you can still see what you're seeing here is the lines of the finished design. So these lines can be will be overlapped by the next piece. So it just needs to go on there and again you iron that one in place. That was piece two. Piece three is her face. So just got to peel. If your paper won't come off easily off the back of your um, your applique piece, sometimes if you just give it a good wriggle, it'll start loosening. Or another suggestion that I have seen people do works quite well would be to stick a pin in between and start loosening it that way. So that's another little thought because sometimes the paper can be a little bit hard to get started on the peeling process. Okay, so now her face goes here and it just overlaps those other bits and it's going to have hair overlapping on that. So really all we're seeing of her neck here is a tiny, tiny bit, but it still needs to be there because we all have a neck. These dolls were fun when I started doing these. These are based on the, or inspired by the Kokeshi dolls from Japan, which are a wooden doll. Um, which are rather lovely, very elegant. Okay, so now my piece four is down here. So this would be hard to assemble all in one piece on a piece of fabric and to get everything in the right place. So this is where this piece behind really helps because now I know that I can put piece number four down here and it's all going to end up in the same, on the same doll, not scattered around the quilt. How's that? Then piece five. And so often there's little overlap marks on the pattern shapes. You know that it's going to overlap because this would be her underskirt. That's why it's at the bottom. So in theory, you're working out your numbering in, as it would be realistically. So if this is her underskirt that's right down the lower part of her. Her next under overskirt would sit on top of that. So this one would go down first. This one would sit on top. So where possible, you put perspective in its place because it helps a lot even though it's still a two-dimensional um, item it just helps with your positioning with how it's going to look in the end so that was piece five piece six goes on next which is her main part of her kimono style dress now this will tell whether your pattern is working for you because this one has to overlap at both ends so we want a little bit of that neck red showing there and we want that to overlap down there and that's looking pretty good. It would be quite uh, quite a lot harder to assemble these in the right place to have been able to pop the underskirts down first if, if you weren't using this method. It's not the only method of course. Now we're going to put piece, um, this is her little uh, obi and so this goes right across here. Now if you can't see that anymore you may have made a mark on this pattern piece which would help you or you can just lift up a little bit and make sure that it's going to sit in the, in the right place and I can see that that needs to come across at about this level here. So I'm just going to pop that piece on there and again iron it on and then piece eight is a little band across that And that sits right in the middle of that piece. And we're nearly done. 
piece nine, there's nine pieces in this applique, is her hair. So just peel off that last one and now we know that that's going to fit right over her hair, her face, sorry, and come down and cover the sides just there. And there she is. And now you're thinking, well, that's all very nice, but she's still on a Teflon mat. But not for long. So now I've got my background piece of fabric just here. Oops, I'm going to need that. I can take these off now. So there she is, fully assembled, all those nine fiddly little pieces. And then I've got my background piece of fabric that I'm going to place her onto. Now I've just done a very light um, finger press just to get a central line so that I can, because she's sort of tall and narrow, so that I can position her up the centre of my piece of fabric. Now just letting that cool, make sure that that's cooled down a little bit, and then you'll find that you can actually just peel that off, just do it gently so that they don't things don't start falling apart, but they shouldn't if you've overlapped everything. And that will just all peel off there. All as one complete doll unit. And how fun is that? She's ready to go. She is pretty excited. And I'm going to just position that on there. And because I've got that finger pressed line, I can see that she's pretty central to my piece of fabric there. And there's no glue left on here. There's still glue left on here, so now I can just iron her in place and she's ready for me to come and stitch around when I'm ready to do so. So if you're doing hand applique um, with this fusible method, you can have them all prepared ready to go so that when you want to pick up some applique and do some stitching, it's all ready in position, it's not going to move around. And there she is, applique onto your background. And the same, I'm a machine sewer, so I don't often do the, the handwork, but she's all ready now for me to just do my applique stitch when I'm ready to do so. So that would be how I would use an applique mat. Um, the other thing is when you're ironing, I sh probably should have gone through quickly, when you're ironing your shapes onto your fabric, initially when you've done your rough cut out and you're ironing to the back of your fabric, for example, you might lay that, you may have two mats, you might lay that between um, and certainly cover your ironing board with this just for it, any time you're using the fusible products, lay your Teflon mat down on your ironing board first, um, and, but you can also cover it just in case there's little bits sticking out because we all know that um, glue sticks onto an ironing board and it, then it sticks your best blouse the next time you iron it or your whatever it is that you're ironing or maybe just your next applique or patchwork piece. Whatever it is, it's not helpful. So if you're using the, the um, fusible products, I would suggest having some sort of a, um, an applique mat that would help with that. Um, I'll quickly just show you now the quilt that she's from, seeing as I've shown you so much of her already, just so that you can see. So all of these dolls were assembled um, like this so that, um, because they're all fiddly, fiddly little bits, you don't want to lose them, you don't want them in the wrong place. And this will work, of course, for all sorts of applique. It doesn't have to be the dolls. Um, it could be scenic. It could be anything where you've got layers and overlapping bits that you're trying to get into the into their right places so that you can assemble things as a unit so that it's the way you're hoping it's going to end up without having disjointed bits and pieces in between. So enjoy using an applique mat and hopefully that will help you.